Hello, Matthew here. Thank you for joining us. I'm back at Brake Crafters today and after completing our inspection of the brakes on the motorcycle we're going to rebuild and reinstall a stock master cylinder on the unit. And I'd like to take you through that procedure today, what to look for, and how to perform the rebuild service. So what we have before us here is a factory Nissan master cylinder. This is similar to or exactly the same as what came off the motorcycle. It is an integral unit where the reservoir and master cylinder are one unit as opposed to the remote reservoir we saw on the motorcycle. So do a quick visual inspection here if anything jumps out at me. Looks nice. I don't see any evidence of peeling paint or bubbling paint indicating leaks. That's a good sign. No crash damage or anything like that. So it looks to be a good serviceable unit. Let's begin taking it apart. And the first thing I like to do is take off the brake lever here so we can check out its situation. There is a nut on the bottom of it that retains it. So we'll remove that. And then the pivot pin is threaded into the master cylinder. So I'll have to unthread it a bit before I can push it out by hand. These are notorious for getting sticky and having corrosion. They put a little, just a little tiny dab of grease on them at the factory. It dries out, moisture and weather and stuff gets in there and we get corrosion and what have you. And it's dry so there's often wear issues here. Have to give it a little bit of pressure on the unit to relieve the spring pressure to get the pin all the way out. Taking a look at it here, uh, not too terrible. I mean there's no evidence of wear. Oftentimes you'll see literally where it's worn through. Uh, the anodizing and such, it is a little bit dirty so I'll want to clean this nicely and then of course we'll grease it when we reassemble. Pulling the lever on off. Look carefully inside at the bushing where this pivots. Again, this is a very high wear area. You can see wear sometimes just at the pivot pin, sometimes just the bushing, often at both. On a few models, this bushing is a separate piece and would push out with your fingers, but on most, it's pressed into the brake lever, and if there was wear here, it would mandate complete lever replacement. Continuing on, I've got a brake light switch underneath here. We talked about this when we did the inspection on the motorcycle. And I want to remove this while I'm doing the service to ensure I don't damage it or break it or contaminate it with fluid. I would like to test it as well. I can plug it into the wire harness on the bike and trip it and see if my light's coming on. Uh, if that's not an option at the moment, I could put a continuity tester ohmmeter on here and again check it and see if the circuit is opening and closing. These are replaceable and inexpensive. It is a commonly failing component and you certainly want to have your rear brake light working for you. As I continue on, I'll take the banjo bolt out. Happened to be left in this one. A couple things we're looking for here is mostly the bolt condition and two things to look at. Uh, the flats are often damaged, like our bleeder screws. It's a relatively soft material, and you can see here where it's had a 12-point wrench on it. It's rounded off a bit. I could reuse this, but I would prefer to replace it with a new unit, and we do have those available. The other issue to look for on older or high mileage units, uh, you can get corrosion buildup from the contaminated brake fluid. And again, that could be cleaned out, but if I have a situation like that, I'd rather just replace the bolt assembly for the sake of it. Ceiling washers should always be replaced anytime I remove the bolt. They're inexpensive and we have those available for you at Brake Crafters as well. Looking at the rest of the master cylinder, the sight glass looks to be in good shape here. No cracks. It's clean. I can see inside. If these are broken, this will happen, or if they become so opaque that I can't see through it to the fluid level, some can be replaced either by factory or aftermarket comp components. It's generally a tough thing to do. If the sight glass is damaged, as often as not, you'll want to obtain a new master cylinder core and rebuild that. As I remove the cap, a couple things, I see that it is installed correctly. The cap should be installed with the writing facing the rider, and this one is facing the right direction. Sometimes that actually matters for the shape of the cap, other times it's just simply the way it's supposed to be, writing facing the rider. The screws holding the cap on, are often very tight from the factory and a poor fitting screwdriver will damage them. They are JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, uh, so not all bits fit them well. Screws can be replaced, they're inexpensive and available as needed. 
as we remove the cap, this particular example has a two-piece cap. So many caps are shaped to hold the rubber diaphragm in place, whereas this one has this plastic insert that shapes the diaphragm and then its thickness combined with the cap allows it to seal. Right away, I'm noticing moisture underneath here. And this is not brake fluid per se, this is actual moisture, water, and you can see it especially on top of the diaphragm here. Glycol-based brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning that it absorbs water naturally. And this is why your manuals always tell you to always use brake fluid from a sealed container. Once the container's been opened, it will begin to absorb moisture. Take my rubber diaphragm off here. It's doing two jobs. It's, of course, sealing the master cylinder, and the diaphragm lays on top of the fluid, and it has this kind of accordion shape, so as the fluid level drops, it expands to fill the space. We can't have any air in there. So this looks to be in pretty good condition. Uh, I certainly want to clean the moisture off of it, and I want to clean the brake fluid off of it. This unit is good enough to reuse, although replacement is recommended if I'm rebuilding a master cylinder, and particularly if we were to see any corrosion, peeling, or uh, paint coming off here is an indication of leakage, because the brake fluid is damaging to paint and plastics not designed to work with it. As I look inside the master cylinder, it's reasonably clean, and that's a good sign. I do see some darkness here. This is some discoloration. is from the brake fluid as it's been going bad over time. So I'm going to need to clean this out, and that could be just as simple as a little bit of brake cleaner and some Q-tips or towels. If there's heavy corrosion inside here, that could require more aggressive methods, a nylon or even metal bristle brush to clean it out. Looking inside, you see that there are two holes or ports, if you will. A large port, which is the feed, and a secondary one here, which is what we call either a relief port or a turn circuit. So the fluid will enter the system through here, and as the lever is released, it will cycle back through here. And I'll talk a little bit more about these as we get further into it. I can leave the handlebar clamp on if I want or remove it. Sometimes it's handy to have on to something to grab onto or clamp up if that should become necessary. To remove the piston set, first thing I've got to do is get the dust boot off of here. That can be a little bit fussy. There's a groove in the plunger. You see right here, okay? And I'll need to get the dust boot out of that. Sometimes you can just pull it with your fingers and it'll pop out. Other times you've got to get underneath it with a dull screwdriver. A small, dull pocket screwdriver is very handy for this type of thing. Fuss that out. Now, we are going to replace this, so it's not critical that you maintain it. You can just dig it out with a clip if it comes down to it, with a pick, if that's what's necessary to get it out. And oftentimes it is. These are often dried up, and see that one is starting to split right there. So it's been in it for a while. Here is the end of our piston. We can see where the brake lever has been coming in contact with it. A little bit of wear there. Not too terribly bad. On older units, high mileage, you see where this is really dug into it, and that can affect lever feel. But it's okay. We're going to get a new piston with a rebuild set. Down inside here is a circlip that retains it. The circlip is going to be supplied with a rebuild kit. So we don't have to worry about salvaging it. At the same time, if I break off the eyelets, in the process of getting it out, uh, it can make my life really difficult getting the remainder of the clip out. And these clips are notoriously diabolical, get loose. I'll need a good set of snap ring pliers here. Uh, your general hardware store type usually don't have the right shape to get down in there properly. These are nice and long and come to a nice fine point. Uh, locate the eyes. Get it in there real good. Make sure it's locked in. You'll need to put a little bit of pressure on it with your finger to unload the clip. And then it's just a matter of fighting it out. And they can be a bit diabolical. So you can expect to spend a minute or two here, be a little frustrated perhaps. But with patience and persistence, you'll eventually get it out. And again, you know, we get a new clip. So if you damage a clip getting it out or lose it, if it shoots across the room, not a huge tragedy. Just be aware that you're going to have to deal with that. Half of the battle is trying to see past the piston and your finger and find the eyelets to insert the tool into. Got it 
almost. All right, now it's out most of the way now. I should be able to dig it out with my pick. And there it comes. Okay, there's our clip. And the little ears on it to help retain it are part of what makes this style clip a bit of a challenge to remove. Here comes our piston set here. And looking at it, we have the primary seal that's moving the fluid. And this little spirally, almost threaded looking area that helps to move fluid. And just looking at it, not in terribly bad shape, but we do observe some corrosion here. So this is what brake fluid looks like when it begins to deteriorate. It first becomes kind of a gelatinous substance and it eventually crystallizes and it can be you know, quite awkward to deal with. So that alone to me merits the rebuild on this unit. You just don't want any garbage in there. And looking down inside the bore here, we see there's another seal and there's a spring behind that. Now, I want to be careful, I do not want to scratch the bore. And sometimes this will all pop out along with the, with the piston set. Other times you'll have to work it out. This is our secondary seal and our turn spring. And the secondary seal is nipped into the end of the spring here. So that's what that all looks like. So all these parts will be replaced in the rebuild, but they all do merit inspection to give us an idea of what condition we're dealing with here.